pleased to now be joined here on Locked On Pac-12 by Josh Neighbors of Locked On Big 12 to bring us some insight from that other conference that doesn't have as cool of a tagline as our beloved Conference of Champions, but we appreciate him anyway. Josh, welcome back to the show. Glad to be back, man. So let's talk about Sam Jackson, who transfers to Cal from TCU. There's not a lot of information out there about him other than he transferred from TCU to Cal and has been the backup in what, what has suddenly become kind of a crowded TCU quarterback room for the, the last couple of years. What can you tell us about the guy who was potentially lined up be the Bears starter in 2023? Yeah, I guess Cal's, Cal's in the market maybe for somebody who, who's doing a bit more, right? So um, the thing about Sam Jackson, you know, that he played wide receiver in high school, then converted to quarterback and had some success, but... TCU made it a point this year of using him in some packages uh, where he could run the football. And this year he actually did pretty successfully. Nine carries for 64 yards and two touchdowns. And it, it wasn't always like it wasn't always garbage time. Like there was a concerted effort to get him onto the field and to get him, you know, doing some certain things. Uh, the two games where he scored, Colorado and then Tarleton, were not close games, but, you know, he played in the uh, – they got a little run in the Oklahoma game. Like, they just wanted to try and give him some looks. Now, once it became so apparent that Max Duggan was the guy, it kind of went by the wayside, right? Like, there was really no need to get him out there. And so his PT fell away, and I think he also realized, hey, I'm going to be behind Chandler Morris as well, right? So I, I think the calculus was, we'll see how long Chandler Morris is there. Um, you know, Duggan's going to be gone, so I'm fine. And then now it's – you know, Chandler Morris didn't really play last year. It's now his turn, and Sam Jackson's like, "All right, I want to, I want to see if I can get somewhere else." So uh, I think that's why he's now at Cal. Interesting that you point out that he was once a, a wide receiver converted to to quarterback. Last quarterback in the Pac-12 to do that was Dorian Thompson Robinson. Not saying Sam Jackson has DTR's potential, but does that mean that athletically you describe him as above average? Yes, he's an above average athlete. Yeah, I mean, like he's not gonna be he's not gonna be a lead thrower. Um, he's not gonna be as good of a thrower as DTR is, but he's he's very fast. I mean he's he's got good speed. I think it's the fact that Cal probably wants somebody who can once again do a little bit of both um with that athletically. And also I like one thing I think it's important to mention too, I'm not sure how much this matters, but like he went from um from Naperville, which is I went to the University of Missouri wearing my shirt right now. New plenty of kids around there. It is a bit more of like a liberal area. DFW is, I'm not saying it's not liberal, but like it's, I guess on the liberal scale, it's a bit more towards the conservative side of you to say, like of, of liberalism, I guess you could say. <laughs> and then obviously Berkeley is Berkeley, right? So I, I think there is maybe a bit of a cultural fit that he's looking for. It's probably a bit more akin to what he had in Chicago, uh, Naperville being a suburb of Chicago, um, you know, in the Illinois area. So I think maybe culturally a bit more of a, an at home feeling to potentially at Berkeley. I, I think he projects as a guy who, you know, hasn't really played very much as more of a raw talent at, at quarterback athletically. And Cal really hasn't had that. I mean, Jack Plummer was a statue in, in the pocket yeah. for, for the most part. And Chase Garbers could move a little bit. I wouldn't describe him as an elite athlete. He was, you know, mobile, but not necessarily a, a great runner. And before that, they had Jared Goff. There was a year or two with Zach Maynard at, at the helm. So this represents a little bit of a different philosophy, just a different kind of player, which might coincide with what Cal is doing with their new offensive coordinator. We don't know what that offense is specifically going to look like at this point in time, but it seems like based on what we do know about him and how he was used at TCU, Josh, he opens up the possibility of incorporating the quarterback run into an offense that has quite literally never used it. Gar Garbers did, I, I suppose, but I wouldn't call it a, a feature, more something they used in the red zone. Yeah, I mean, Cal, this is a Cal offense that desperately needs a kick in the butt, right? Like they need, to, and I'd say the entire Cal program does. I, I like Justin Wilcox. Like I, I think he is a good football coach, but I think oftentimes at a place like that, like their defense has been normally pretty good. I forget how it was last year, but like obviously he's a it was okay. Team. It was it was, yeah, it was way yeah. below where it usually is, and it was still middle of the conference, which is right. what that like that's what Cal is. 
And also now. the offense, the offense a lot of times can have something to do with that, right? The offense just isn't generating much offense. True. Like it's constantly putting your defense. I mean, I always mention this, but like bad offensive line play, like it kills your offense, it kills your defense too, because usually field position is not going to be very good and drive times are going to be shorter, putting your defense in the field longer. So I think ha- having that quarterback run means more or uh, less, uh, or uh, well, less clock stoppages, right? Less incompletions more time for the offense and their opportunity just, you know, to have the ball more, to run, run more. And I just think that's a great value for Cal to potentially, and I'm not sure, once again, I'm not sure what the battle is going to be this year, but if I'm Cal, like I'm pretty open to trying new things on the offensive side, because look at where they were four and eight last year. They desperately need to do something to kind of revamp themselves because they're so far away from what kind of good Cal golden bears football looks like. Yeah, and in the entire time that Wilcox has been there, it's been a question of can the offense take a step forward because it has always been what's held the Bears back from being a better team. They've had glimpses. They had glimpses a year ago, but it was ultimately not enough, and I think it was the right call to ultimately make a change at the offensive coordinator position. But I'm just so interested to see if, you know, even after getting excuse me a contract extension – Justin Wilcox isn't just going back to the drawing board with this addition. Not that Jackson wouldn't have garnered interest from other schools, but were there other notable or high high level programs that were going after Sam Jackson, or was this an instance where Cal was kind of the best offer that that he had seemingly because Cal is looking to just revamp how they play on that side of the ball? Yeah, so I think here's the deal with with Sam Jackson. Um, you know, out of high school, like he was a pretty highly ranked recruit. He was a four star coming out of high school. He was a 374th player in the country. So he's a guy's top 500 player. That's not a, that's no, you know, small potatoes. Um, I just think the intriguing thing about him is, is him as an athlete and just didn't get a whole lot of runs. So there's a lot of questions about him. So he's going to be added most likely at a power five program as QB depth not as a guy that you hand the keys to. So I think with that in mind, Cal is probably a place you like your chances. If we're, you know, and look, I'm sure they're going to be more than one guy, but like if I'm a highly talented recruit who can do something and bring something to the table that has not been done by a a Cal quarterback in a while uh, or quarterback in that system, pretty good fit. I think, you know, to, to potentially have a chance to make a difference for that school, because I don't think, at least at the P5, I think he sees himself clearly as a power five level player and the recruiting systems would agree with him, uh, right? So I think with that in mind, he was, all right, where can I go play P5 football? And where can I, keyword, play P5 right. football, right? And so it's going to be it's gonna be Cal uh, is, is kind of the choice. Yeah, and I think he's got that opportunity because there's no clear other option at this point in time. There's still another portal window. I mean, Ole Miss has got three quarterbacks who could all reasonably start. Maybe one of them goes in and Cal tries to get into those sorts of of sweepstakes. And one more note here is uh, Spencer. He jumped to the portal on the 10th of January and then committed on the 11th. So there was really no time for him to actually like it. This was, this was already premeditated. if you will. Gotcha. So there had been sort of some back channel conversations and, and understanding that, that this was going to happen. That, that makes it seem that like that in it that in and of itself the tenth and the eleventh factor into the portal versus when he committed makes you think he's probably coming in to to be the starter and I think yeah. if you're Cal and I, and I think if you're Cal you just you, you got to make some some sort of swing there yeah nothing promised probably but also at the same time too it's like look you have a lot of confidence in your abilities you're obviously a highly talented guy if you're anything like you know like your your abilities you should be able to win this job and I bet Sam Jackson's betting on that. Yeah, and that is something we will definitely be watching for in the Cal Spring game. Josh Neighbors locked on Big 12. You want to talk about that other Power 5 conference that's kind of geographically close to us here in our beloved Conference of Champions. Go so, check him so, out. Such a rivalry. Uh, find us locked on Big 12 wherever you guys get your podcasts. And only in like television. I'm not actually on the field any rivalry at all. Uh, locked on Big 12 wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as well. Find us at LO Big 12 on Twitter. And you guys can find me at Josh Neighbors underscore. Appreciate it as always, Josh. And uh, I think we'll just continue to build up this Pac-12, Big 12 TV rivalry. Can't wait for the media deal. Gloves are off, baby. We're yeah. we're going at it. When is that coming Pac-12's by? Though? Coming we need, we need to get that thing. We need to get that TV Shh, deal signed. Patience. 
Patience. Patience, Patience is a virtue, as sure. someone once said. That's all we'll say for today. Appreciate everyone listening. See you next time. Have a wonderful rest of your day.